Now at 6, the Capitol Police Union is appealing to lawmakers asking for more protection due to recent violence. The latest on the investigation into the deadly car attack. As vaccinations increase, so does the demand for air travel. Why health experts say the key to normalcy is shots in arms. The pandemic isn't stopping Easter celebrations this year. How beautiful weather allowed local churches to take the festivities outdoors. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Jessica Jewell. The officer hurt in Friday's Capitol attack is out of the hospital tonight. That same attack killed fellow officer William Evans. The incident came less than three months after rioters stormed the Capitol. Today, the Capitol Police Union chair informed Congress several on the force want to quit. Suspect Noah Green was shot and killed after lunging at police with a knife. The FBI and others are still trying to determine the motive. It does not appear to be terrorism uh, related, but obviously uh, we'll continue to investigate. Flags are again flying at half staff at the Capitol as officers ask lawmakers for better protection. A man is receiving medical treatment tonight after a standoff in Roanoke County related to mental health. A county spokesman says police responded to the Holiday Inn at Tanglewood around 8 this morning. His family had reported him missing about a week ago and filed an emergency custody order, but the man didn't want to go with police and barricaded his door. Police deployed pepper gas after about five hours and he surrendered. The man was unarmed and the area reopened to the public around 1. One person has serious injuries after a shooting in downtown Roanoke Saturday night just before midnight. Police say they responded to a report someone had been shot in the 100 block of Campbell Avenue Southeast. The man who was hurt had been taken to the hospital before police arrived. No arrests have been made. This is an ongoing investigation. Halifax County authorities are asking for your help to find a murder suspect. Take a look at your screen. This is who they're looking for, Jeffrey Davis. Police have a warrant to arrest him for second-degree murder for his alleged involvement in a shooting on Harmony Road Friday night. Officers say he's considered armed and dangerous. If you have any information, call police. Two people are hurt after a serious crash in northwest Roanoke. This is video from the incident late last night. Crews responded to a vehicle entrapment on Melrose Avenue after it overturned. The two passengers had to be removed and taken to the hospital. Officials say one has serious injuries. It was a record-setting weekend for air travel during the pandemic. The TSA says Saturday marked the 24th consecutive day where more than 1 million passengers were screened at U.S. airports. Some flyers say the spike is thanks to COVID fatigue and increased vaccines. Top U.S. health officials say vaccines are the solution to getting back to normal. This is not going to last forever because every day that you get 4 million, 3 million people vaccinated, you get closer and closer to control. The CDC says more than 106 million Americans have already received at least one dose and more than 61 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. Easter worship may look different this year due to the pandemic, but with a bright sunny day today, many Roanoke churches moved the celebration outdoors. Ted News reporter Alexa Stavila shows us how local churches got creative this Easter Sunday. Wearing masks and their Sunday's best, about 150 people gathered for Easter worship at Elmwood Park. Though normally this calls for an indoor service, the need to social distance brought them outside. It's part of the Easter story, right? Easter happened outside. The, the first telling of Easter happened outside, so it's a perfect setting. And Swank agrees, calling this year's celebration the best one yet. But bringing a bit of the past, Swank showed off her 10-year-old Easter bonnet. The kids love it. Dressed in colorful eggs with a baby chick nestled on top. And I always get compliments from the children, and that's kind of the fun of it. It's just to bring out the joy of Easter and the beauty of Easter in just a different way. The fun did not stop there. <laughs> Hiding 25,000 eggs, Parkway Church on the Mountain encouraged children to run wild in a massive Easter egg hunt. It means a lot. We've, you know, everybody's been inside for so long. Now that the kids can actually go out, we can do it outside. The kids are having a blast. It's just what Pastor Andy Hardy likes to hear since last year's egg hunt was canceled. We added an extra area this year too to kind of spread it out even more. But I think we have 
even more people this year than we've had in years past. So I think people are ready to get out. In Roanoke, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Flexible working from home is more popular than ever, and it shows in your morning routine. How coffee consumption at home has increased during the pandemic. And it's been a beautiful weekend. We have more sunshine and warmth on the way. Just how long we keep the rain away coming up in your full forecast. Job growth skyrocketed last month. The Labor Department is reporting an increase of more than 916,000 jobs in March. Analysts credit stronger economic growth and an aggressive vaccination effort, saying both are behind companies hiring more workers. The unemployment rate dropped to 6%. Industry analysts say the pandemic is driving record coffee consumption at home. According to a survey from National Coffee Data Trends, consumption is up 8% since January of last year. More than 40% of Americans bought types of coffee they'd never tried before the pandemic, and nearly a third tried to replicate a favorite coffee shop beverage at home. Let's give you a live look from our poor mountain sky cam where the sun is still shining on this beautiful Easter Sunday. Delaney tells us when our rain chances return coming up in just a few minutes. Your local weather authority always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. It has been a beautiful Easter Sunday, more sunshine, some higher clouds at times and temperatures definitely running warmer today. You're looking live to our sky cam over in Martinsville, still holding on to some of those higher cirrus clouds, but take a look at just how warm we were today. Most of us tapping into the 70s, though, really holding on to some 60s, upwards of the upper 60s back towards the New River Valley, even the highlands. We're still at 73 degrees in South Boston here in Roanoke, 72 and 61 one over in hot springs over the course of the next few hours. Our temperatures they are going to be dropping fast, but it is still going to be a very mild evening for us still in the lower 70s right around 7 upper 50s around 11 PM. So as you can imagine, our temperatures are not going to be running quite as cold as we have been in recent nights. In fact, this is more seasonal for what we should see this time of year. 45 degrees here in Roanoke 44 back towards Danville. The cooler spot definitely back towards New River Valley 39 over in Wisconsin filled by tomorrow morning. Our temperature trend over the coming days is going to continue to warm up. We've seen that we're already above average today. In fact, by almost 10 degrees for tomorrow, about seven degrees above average. We're going to continue to see that. Excuse me, uh, 12 degrees above average for tomorrow. Even on Tuesday, Wednesday is going to be our warmest day before our next cold front and low pressure system moves through. But you can see even then our temperatures are still going to be running above average. So we do have this high pressure system that's been lingering nearby. That is really what has helped to keep our sunshine around and at this point has helped to warm us up now that some of those gustier winds are gone too. Now we have to watch our next low pressure system that is well off to our west at this point, which is why it's going to be a quiet start to the work week. But from there, come say Wednesday, a few isolated showers are possible, but Thursday is when we're going to start to see more of that impactful rain moving in, especially later towards the afternoon and evening hours sticking around for your Friday. So definitely seeing a better chance for rain for the second half of the work week. Something to watch very closely. So precipitation coverage again Monday and Tuesday looking fantastic. If you do want to make some plans outdoors, go out to lunch possibly. Fantastic to do so. Right around Friday, though, we are going to see those rain chances increasing widely scattered across the entire region. It's going to be busy for us, certainly for the end of the work week. Now, by Friday, those temperatures are still going to be lingering in the lower 70s for the New River Valley. For the highlands, your temperatures will be staying in the 70s through Wednesday. From there, we're into the upper 60s. Rain chances sticking around, unfortunately, through the weekend, but they're going to be a little bit more isolated than they will be on Friday. Something else we also want to watch for very closely, of course, are those temperatures. When we have these warmer temperatures this time of year, of course, that means that we could have just enough instability in the atmosphere to create some stronger to severe storms. For the Roanoke Valley, 78 for a high on Wednesday. We will be in the lower 70s for the end of the work week, even mid 60s on Sunday with more rain chances sticking around. Jessica. All right, thank you, Delaney. Coming up tonight on 10 News at 11, a story to inspire others to assist families in need. How a woman's quest to help her son with autism led her to train service dogs.
And coming up after the break, a recap of last night's thriller in the Final Four as Gonzaga proves its worth, a new contract for one local college hoops coach, and we catch up with Cole Custer as NASCAR preps for Martinsville Speedway this week next in sports. News and notes, Vancouver Canucks have at least 14 positive COVID cases. The Nats are preparing to play the Braves tomorrow. No official decision made by the MLB. And just before we came on air, Jordan Spieth won the Valero Texas Open. Lonzo Griffin finished a two under par tied for 34th. The zoo in Germany is showing us that Easter treats are not just for people. The zoo rewarded its gorillas with a basket of Easter eggs and some salad. But the gorilla dad tried to grab all the treats <laughs> for himself. So these are mine. Sounds about right. Huh? <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. He seemed to love the salad a little too much. Just a little. I would all be taking that. All the eggs went flying out of the basket. Yeah, you're right. Maybe he didn't know what was in them. Mm. I would be taking those eggs, though. Yeah, me too. Not the salad. Yeah, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> One last check of your forecast for this evening. Our temperatures are going to be running mild. Eventually into the mid-60s right around 9 p.m., upper 50s around 11. So by tomorrow morning, our temperatures are going to be mostly in the 40s across our area. Now, your seven-day forecast keeps us on this warming trend through about Wednesday, 78 degrees for our high going to be feeling beautiful and of course well below excuse me above average as you can see 10 to 15 degrees at times from there that's when our next low pressure system will approach dropping our temperatures but not too dramatically nothing like what we saw last week and of course bringing in some rain and that potential for maybe some stronger storms especially come Friday so make sure you download the WSLS 10 weather app. In the meantime, tonight, tomorrow, the next yes. couple days, get outside, get outside, <laughs> grill.